The people of Lismore are tough. They've been through so much. Still trying to rebuild after floods devastated the town a year and a half ago. Now they're being smashed again by red tape and broken promises. If this was uh, closer to the CBD of Sydney, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you now. Things would have happened a lot faster. Lismore Mayor Steve Krieg doesn't like to call himself a victim, even though his own cafe and house were devastated in last year's flood. His daily mission is to help the people of his area rebuild their lives. But the battle is no longer against Mother Nature. I'm buggered, actually, to be honest with you. I'm, you know, over the whole process of actually getting up every day and having to fight bureaucrats for, you know, things that were promised so long ago now. The floods hit 17 months ago and the promises soon followed. First, from the former Prime Minister. We need to get this sorted. Then his replacement too. The previous New South Wales Premier promised buybacks of flood-affected properties. That is something the government is committed to. And his replacement made some promises as well. I'm here to listen and to ensure that this community knows that it's not going to be forgotten just because of the change of government in New South Wales. But forgotten is exactly how this community feels right now. It's the biggest humanitarian disaster in Australia's history and here we are 17 months on with people still living with one PowerPoint under their house with tarps and canvas on their walls to stop the wind and, you know, it was minus two this morning. You know, we can't see the end date of when we're going to be back in our house. Michaela and Craig Navia are raising three children living in two caravans in the front yard of their home. Despite being several blocks from the river, their home was inundated and they were rescued by the Tinney Army. The first few months after the flood is just a blur. Yeah. Uh, we were just in shock. Uh, we didn't know what was going to happen. We'd lost all of our possessions, all gone, two cars lost. They received a disaster relief grant to make their home livable in the short term. That included this tiny sliver of a kitchen, basically a sink and a stove. Compared to what it used to look like, it's still a long way from being a home. We need all the appliances replaced, the air conditioning, the cupboards. It's just overwhelming how many things need doing. The family have been in limbo, holding out hope for the $700 million Resilient Homes program that will fund buybacks, raisings and retrofits. So far, 6,471 people have applied and 60% of those have been assessed. Only 1,011 have been accepted for buybacks. Michaela and Craig are among the thousands to miss out. Apparently, uh, almost dying is not a high priority. Some people are over the moon, some people are absolutely shuttered. Mayor Steve Krieg explains the map system used by the Northern Rivers Reconstruction Corporation to decide priority levels for buybacks. South Lismore was one of the hardest hit areas, with residents clinging for their lives on rooftops, yet many of those homes have also missed out. Well, they don't even make it to a priority level two. They're priority level three on this map. We're just sort of left in the dark. We don't know. Uh, a year and a half later, we, they've only just released the maps. The all-important maps that decide who qualifies for a buyback are not even based on the 2022 flood levels. It was deemed an outlier to flood statistics when the bureaucrats made their calculations. That means nothing to these poor people. They just want to know that what was promised to them, what was discussed, is going to be delivered. Just give us some hope. At the moment, Lismore has no hope. Angry? Lost? Henry Luong lives in East Lismore and was also holding out hope for a buyback. His loss of hope is turning to anger. We've flooded, we've forgotten and we've because we don't have a future. A spokesperson for the Reconstruction Corporation says in a statement, homes prioritised for a buyback offer are based on the greatest risk to life for both residents and emergency service responders. 
The new analysis has also shown there is a need for more buybacks and they have increased staff at the call centre, which now runs 24 hours. They don't communicate probably as well as, as they should with the community. Uh, our, our residents have been exceptionally patient. The community is running out of patience, but the Mayor is hopeful more funding will become available with less hurdles in handing it out. Let us lead the reconstruction of our town. We know it best. We know what needs to be done, but we don't have a say. We're left out of the loop. They have every right to be angry, don't they? As the mayor himself said, they know their own town, what they need, so give them control so everyone can get back on with their lives. Makes sense.